An issue that's close to all of our hearts is gender equality in sport. And Joe, encouraging more girls to take up and continue playing sports has been a great passion of yours as well. Oh, absolutely, Dust. It's not just about physical fitness, it's about mental health, it's about your confidence. Girls who are in teams, they learn how to be team leaders and be assertive. And I mean, across the board, playing sport is so great for girls. And Jackie, as a TV sports reporter, you help promote the on-screen representation of women in the AFL. How do you think this has encouraged more girls to get into footy? Well, simply, we can't be what we can't see, right? Mm. And I remember growing up, we were banned from playing football. Mm. It was only a boys' game. And now to watch my five-year-old start doing Auskick, it's a dream, you yeah. know? I, I distinctly remember being a young kid and being told to get off the oval because I was kicking a footy with my mates who were boys. It's really sad, isn't it, when, when yeah. you think about it? I've seen it through my daughter, Sienna, as well. Joan and I, Willow plays uh, junior footy and she's now really passionate about the rowing world. So the benefits of team sport, the fact that we've, mm. you know, discouraged girls in the past, it's pretty unfortunate, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's devastating, I think, and it's an unfortunate fact that physical activity declines significantly for girls once they hit adolescence, way more than it does for boys. A lot of it has to do with teenage girls' body image and how comfortable or self-conscious they feel playing sport. That includes how they feel about the uniforms that they wear. You were so right, Joe. Remember the International Beach Handball Federation recently came under fire for insisting female athletes wore skimpy, high-cut bikini bottoms. The Norwegian women's team protested, resulting in a change to uniform protocol. It seems ridiculous, doesn't it? Oh, and, and at the time, I remember almost every woman I know just celebrating, going, yes, finally, we're being listened to and things are changing. And the women quite rightly said, being made to wear, revealing bikini bottoms made them more uncomfortable and objectified. And the rules now state women must wear tight, close-fitting shorts. And yet the men's handball rules simply say that male players must wear shorts that aren't too baggy. So there's still sexism there, there's some progress, but honestly, why aren't women allowed to wear whatever they want? Makes no sense at yeah. all. The, the German gymnastics team also ditched the traditional high-cut leotards at the Tokyo Olympics and chose to wear ankle-length outfits. And so change is happening, maybe just not fast enough. Well, in order to even the playing field when it comes to women in sport, a landmark study is now underway in Victoria. Let's hear first from Professor Claire Hanlon, who's conducting the study, Sarah Stiles from the Office for Women in Sports and Recreation, and Aussie swimmer Sean Whitaker. Nearly 50% who were surveyed believed that because they were able to wear dark coloured instead of white pants or shorts instead of skirts or longer length swimsuits instead of shorter swimsuits, it actually encouraged them to stay longer in the sport. There's been so many revealing uniforms over the years that young women and women have felt uncomfortable in and therefore have had and resulted in body image issues. Some of the benefits for having flexible sport uniforms for girls is simply that they feel more comfortable and they're going to stay there. And I often think about it in the reverse, which what, what might the cost be? And reality is, outside of the cost of the uniforms themselves, there really isn't any. There's really nothing to lose by going down this path. I've never had a choice before on what I can wear and these new rules, as a swimmer and as an athlete, I can wear what I want to in the pool. It's that choice because not one size fits all. It's like not one style fits all. With this information, what we're saying is whether you're a sports club, you're a school, whatever that might be, have a consideration of how is that impacting the girls and can you make their lives feel that little bit more comfortable and their life in sport a little bit more fun. So this is a dive into body image and how that plays a key role in whether girls are physically active. And the key strategy in keeping girls and women in sport is letting them choose their uniforms. When they ask girls what would get them involved or keep them in a sport, they want a choice of uniforms that make them feel ready for the sport and not overexposed. They want clothing that fits well and isn't unisex. And they want dark coloured bottoms and uniforms from appropriate materials. It's certainly not a lot to ask, you would think. Well, it's not a lot to ask to also be listened to. And isn't it wonderful that we're actually asking the girls and women who play the sports, what is going to make you feel comfortable? Because I remember being really examined and exposed when I played sport, which <laughs> won't surprise you to know was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it is, you're out there and you feel very exposed in whatever you're wearing. So I think it's really wonderful having more choice and empowering women and girls absolutely impacts female players' levels of comfort and confidence.
Sarah Stiles from the Office of Women in Sport and Recreation is absolutely right when she says there's nothing to lose by going down the path of choice, just more girls invested in sport for the cost of uniform and they actually like what they're wearing. Well, we can only hope that decision makers at various sports organisations take this information seriously and act on it.